you got your Bibles, turn in the book of Exodus for just a little bit this morning. We've studying yesterday and thinking about uh, folks that the days and the hours and the times that we're living in and what the times that we're facing right now uh, in the families and the loved ones that uh, are having having some hard times. And uh, the thing about it is we're facing some times that it's easy to get discouraged and it's easy to get beat down. But the thing about it is <clears throat> don't give up. Give in to the Lord and look to Him when things are the roughest and the hardest. And then I want you to think about this. When it's the bitterest, then it becomes sweet. I want you to think about that. When the bitter becomes sweet. Let's stand. If you find your place in Exodus chapter 15 and think about the bitter becoming sweet. And here in Exodus chapter number 15, I want to begin reading in verse number 24 and I want to read down through verse number 26. And the Bible says this, and it said, and the people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? Now, I want to bring you up to date before we read any farther. The thing about it is, the children of Israel had just come out of the land of Egypt. God had just brought them through the Red Sea. And when he had brought them out of the Red Sea, and brought them out on dry land. He had parted it. And Pharaoh and all of his chariots and all of his horses and all of his men had been killed. And the Red Sea had folded them up and they were totally dead. And uh, God had brought them into the, the desert and they had gone a little way. But the Bible says... And Moses, he said, and he cried unto the Lord. And I want you to notice that as before we go any farther. Now, folks, he didn't cry unto the people. He didn't cry unto anybody else for help. But he went straight to God. He knows where to go. He knows, and I want you to know where your help comes from today. I want you to know that God has never and will never forget His children. He will never forget you. And he said, He cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And he said, Which he had cast into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. And there he made for them a, a statue a, and, and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And he said, If thou wilt uh, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, add your blessings to the reading of the Word of God. God, save that soul that's lost. Heal that one that's sick. Raise that one up that's drawing far away from thee. And God, give them a sweetness down in their soul and God give them a new look at a blessed old book. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. 
All right? Now here, as we begin to look at this, I want us to understand this as we look at this. Now, the Bible is telling Moses here not to forget what they had been through. Now, the thing about it was, let's go backwards just a little bit. Now, God had told them down in Egypt before he would ever bring them out. He said, now, I want you to take and put the, uh, uh, the sign that I will recognize before I'll ever bring you out. I want you to take a lamb and uh, I want you to slaughter that lamb and I want you to take the blood and I want you to put that blood on each side of the doorpost uh, on, and then I want you to put it on the lintel. And I want you to think about something this morning, folks, uh, before you do anything else. Uh, God will never let you and never honor you uh, if you're walking over the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, he never told them to put it uh, on, uh, on uh, the bottom or on the threshold of the door. Uh, he only told them to put it on uh, the sides and on the top. Uh, but he told them, uh, he said, I'm coming through Egypt tonight uh, and I'll take the first firstborn out of every family. Uh, but he said, uh, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Uh, I'm glad, thank God, uh, that when God sees the blood, uh, when God sees the blood, uh, thank Thank God, uh, brother, he'll pass over me. Uh, brother, uh, when God sees the blood, uh, death has no hold on uh, uh, God's children. Uh, blood, it's the blood uh, that'll take care of you. Uh, it's the blood of the Lamb of God uh, that'll watch over you. Uh, brother, it's the blood or nothing. Uh, you're not going to heaven uh, if you've never been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, and brother, God uh, had sent the children of Israel uh, but he parted uh, he put a wall of water here uh, and a wall of water there uh, and he said uh, the children of Israel uh, went over on dry ground uh, what is he talking about uh, brother uh, they didn't walk through a mud hole uh, God don't want you a wallowing in the mud of this world uh, brother God wants you uh, uh, to walk uh, uh, upright uh, and God wants you uh, to live righteously uh, and God wants you uh, to stay out of the sin pots of this world uh, and God wants you uh, uh, to be a child of God uh, and let others see uh, that you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb of God uh, but when Pharaoh uh, had changed his mind uh, and he went after him uh, brother uh, when Moses got every single child uh, of the living God through the waters, uh, God closed the waters up uh, and he killed every one of them. Uh, brother, God will take care of your enemies. Uh, God will take care of your foes. Uh, God take care uh, of those uh, that will do you wrong. Uh, God will take care uh, of everything in your life uh, that goes against the grain uh, of God's young inside. Uh, I'm glad, thank God, uh, that I've been washed in the blood. Uh, I've been saved. Uh, brother, I've been, uh, I've been to Calvary uh, and I know where I'm going. Uh, why? Because, uh, brother, uh, I've been to the pool. Uh, I've been to the place uh, where, uh, uh, brother, uh, God had taken uh, and he turned the bitter sweet. Uh, he washed away the sins. Uh, he didn't just uh, uh, do uh, a little uh, a cleansing for a little while. Uh, brother, God washed me uh, in the blood of the Lamb of God. Uh, and he made the bitter sweet. Brother, God can do the same for you. Uh, 
First, I want you to notice uh, that he took uh, in verse number 25. Uh, it's what I want us to look at this morning uh, for just a few minutes. Uh, and he said, here, uh, and he cried unto the Lord. Uh, brother, the man of God, uh, he was crying unto God uh, for the children uh, that he, uh, God had put him uh, in charge of. Uh, and he said, the Lord showed him uh, a tree, a tree. He was looking forward. Uh, he was looking to Calvary. He was looking, uh, brother, the Red Sea, uh, brother, was a sign uh, of victory. Uh, brother, victory uh, is uh, coming uh, for the child of God. Uh, victory uh, is ahead, uh, brother, for you and I. Thank God, uh, death uh, ain't nothing uh, but a graduation certificate. Brother, that's all it is. Uh, victory uh, brings uh, and then also uh, a lot of times in this walk of life uh, at old red sea uh, it brings some trials it brings some trials we have to walk through some valleys sometimes uh, in order to reach a mountaintop Amen. brother we have to see uh, but you go down this mountaintop and you'll go down this side, you'll go through a valley, but thank God there's a mountain right over there. It takes two mountain tops to make a valley. But when, brother, when the rains come, when it gets hard, and the rains start pouring down, all of that topsoil, it just washes down this mountain and washes down that mountain. Brother James, that's when the topsoil and all all that fertile soil comes down and them fig trees just begin to grow. Uh, brother, uh, amen, hallelujah to God. Uh, when them our spies went over there uh, in the Jericho, uh, went over into the land of Canaan uh, and come back uh, oh, with that big uh, a pot of grapes on their shoulders. Uh, brother, I'll tell you right now, uh, I believe they had grapes uh, and brother, they pulled them down uh, over their ears uh, that look like swimming caps uh, or look like footballs. Uh, brother, they had them. Uh, they were so big it took two of them to carry them. Uh, hallelujah to God, brother. Uh, I'm going to tell you, Jake, you might not like, like grapes. Uh, you might not like raisins. Uh, but hallelujah to God. Uh, brother, I tell you, if I was there, it'd take a, a, uh, somebody uh, bigger than I am. To, uh, them grapes are as big as watermelon. Brother, what am I talking about? Hallelujah to God. Brother, God can make the bitter sweet if you'll let him. God can do that. But the thing about it was, in all of their trials, there was a pool. They began to holler, boy, we're getting thirsty. You ever been thirsty? I mean, really been thirsty. I mean, so thirsty you could have drunk out of a mud hole. Brother, I have. But trials, you know what to do? Look here. It said, and the Lord showed me a tree, and when he had cast it into the water. But the thing about it is, trials brings testing. It'll test you. Trials bring some testing. What in the world, and let me ask you something. What in the world is throwing a tree in a pool of water going to do? Brother, you think about it. Brother, I'll tell you, that there before that tree uh, will ever do anything. Uh, brother, before them trials, uh, brother, uh, brother, a tree's got to have water. Uh, Brother, that tree, uh, before it'll ever grow, uh, before anything, uh, there's got to have water. Uh, brother, before you'll ever uh, amount to anything, uh, there's got to be washing of the Word. Uh, you've got to be cleansed by the Word of God. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, uh, uh, brother, you, uh, you've got to be saved. Uh, 
by the preaching of the Word of God. You'll never be saved unless the Word of God draws you. Brother, I've got to have a drink of that living water. What did he tell that woman at the well in John 4? He said, uh, she said, uh, you ain't got nothing to draw with. Uh, He said, you don't know what I'm talking about. He said, I'll give you water that you ain't never drunk of. I'll give you water that you'll never thirst again. Oh, she said, I want some of this water. Brother, I'll tell you, brother, I ain't never wanted to be saved again. But every time I see somebody get saved, bless God, I get recapped. Amen. Hallelujah to God. I love to see people get saved by the washing of the Word of God. Brother, it'll clean you up. It'll make a drunk, an old pill pusher, and a pill taker. Brother, it'll make them a candidate for glory. Not only that. Brother, that testing, then you'll need prayer. Brother, look what he said. He said, and he cried unto the Lord. He cried out uh, and he said, God, uh, God, I need, uh, we need some water. He had, I don't know, close to a half a million people. They went down there by one man, just by a family. Uh And then they came out a nation. They came out of the nation 400 years of poverty, of beating, thrashing, making brick, but they come out a nation. God brought them out as a nation. He told him, he said, these are my people. You bring them out. You bring them out. One of these days, Sister Liz, God's going to, God's going to blow, send that angel out there. I don't know who it's going to be. If it's going to be Michael, Gabriel, or Houdini, I don't know who it's going to be. But the thing about it is, brother, like I told them, and I've told y'all, when he toots, I'm going to scoot, and I'm going out of here. I'm going up, brother. I ain't looking for him. I'm listening for him. Brother, when the sound from heaven, brother, when the shout, brother, when the night comes, said, come up hither. Brother, to God, I'm gone. And brother, I ain't taking nothing with me, but the saved of God is going with me. He's calling my name and I'm going. Brother, but what does it do? Testing needs prayer, and prayer brings what? Sweet water. Look what he said. He said, and when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were what? They were made sweet. Oh, boy. Wouldn't I love to have some of that kind of water? Huh? Well, I have. I've had some of that water. I found it on my knees when I confessed my sins unto God and asked God to come in here. Oh, that was the sweetest feeling that I've ever had when God washed my sins away. He didn't just cleanse me for a year or two years. He washed it all away. And not only that, but I want you to look what, in 1 Peter, In chapter 2 and verse number 4, listen to what the Bible says. And he said here, To whom coming as unto a lively stone, he said, Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ain't he precious? Ain't ain't, ain't God, ain't the Lord Jesus just precious? This is a sign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, the tree. Oh, the tree, he was nailed to a tree. He was nailed to a tree. Why? Because of the washing of the the word. The word. The word. The the pool. The the water. The washing of the word of God. 
the water. You've got to be washed. Mother, you've got to be cleansed through the word of the living God. This word, the Bible, from God Almighty will wash you. Brother, it'll show you that you need to be saved. It'll show you where you're wrong. It'll show you where you're right. It'll show you how to live. It'll show you how to talk. It'll show you how to run that tongue and it'll show you how to stop running it. That's the reason God gave you two ears, two eyes, one, yeah, and one tongue, one mouth, and that little devil still get loose. All right, but the thing about it is, you know that, that pool, it was for the healing. It was for healing, it was thirsting. But it's also, it was for healing. But it was spiritual, it was physical, and it was also, brother, it was for the thirst. He said, throw it into the water. Throw that tree into the water. What did Jesus Christ say? He said, I've not come to do my will. I've not come to do your will. But I've come to do the Father's will. Brother, listen. Peter come to him. And what did Peter say? He said, though, he said, I'll die for you. I'll go with you all the way. Brother, anything, they'll know by going to harm you. And brother, he even cut off one. Oh, Malchus's ear there on in Gethsemane. Brother, in one place, he told old Peter, he said, he said, get thee behind me, Satan. Brother, what? And Peter said, I'll go with you. But also, down in Pilate's hall, brother, he stood there and he said, I don't know him. Brother, but before the night was uh, gone, before uh, he went to Calvary, uh, Peter denied him three times. Uh, brother, how many times have you denied him? How many times have we pushed him aside? How many times uh, have we left God out? Uh, how many times have we made decisions uh, on things? And how many times have we went and done things and never prayed about them? Moses said, I cried unto the Lord, God, I'm thirsty. The, my people are thirsty. Thirsty. I went in there yesterday. Jean was in there. She was cooking. She was mopping. She was working. And I was out there, God, God, Mount Carmel is thirsty. God, God feed my people. God feed our congregation. God make them thirsty. God make them hungry. God, I just, I just want them to get so hungry for the word of God. And then God, I want you to do this for me. I want you to take me back to Calvary. I want you to take me back to the night I got, the, that I got saved. And God, I want you to put that joy back in my soul. God, I want to go back by the way of remembrance. That night, that Saturday night, God, I want that joy and God, I don't want it to ever leave. God, that night that I threw, and then I said, no, oh God, no, I didn't throw that tree in the water. But that night, God, you put your son and your word together in my heart and let me confess that I had denied him that I had went against your word, that God, I was a sinner, that I broke your heart, that God, I needed a savior, that God, this man that preached, and I don't remember his name, 
But God, tonight, he showed me I was going to hell. That God, if I didn't get saved tonight, God, you may never touch my heart ever again. And Lord, tonight, God, wash me in that pool. Wash me, God. Cleanse me. Oh, God, I want to be cleansed. Oh, God, I don't want to be covered. God, I want to be washed. I want to be washed. I want to be scrubbed all over again. God, God said, son, I don't wash all over again. Oh, God. Oh, God, when I do it, I do it right the first time. Oh, dear God, I said, God, I know that, but God, I want that feeling. I don't want it ever to leave me. And when I read this, I read chapter after chapter before, and I got to this, and God said, I threw that tree in that water, the washing of the word for you and every one at Mount Carmel. Dean, preach this word. Preach this word. And the thing about it was, that bitter pool, they couldn't drink it. You can't drink it. Look what it says. It says, and the people murmured against Moses, what shall we drink? But look at verse 23. It said, and when they came to Myra, they could not drink of the waters. They couldn't drink it, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name was called Myra. They couldn't drink the water. Why? They couldn't stand the Word of God. They couldn't stand it. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear preaching. They didn't want the water, the washing of the Word of God. Why? They weren't right. People today are not right. People are not saved. They're sitting in church, but they're not right with God. They're not saved. They're not going to glory. If God blowed the whistle today, if God blowed the tad and blowed the trumpet, would you go to glory? Would you go? Sammy, if if any how many? Then he sprinkles in glory. He's, he's, he's gone into eternity. Somebody come down the road and hit him while he was pulling a, a disabled car on a roll back and hit him and killed him. He's in eternity. What if that had been you? changing a tire on the side of the road. And here come a car down the road and smacked you and killed you. Where would you be today? Oh, the water's bitter, I can't drink. But you'll never have an opportunity to drink again. The bitter will never be made sweet. The bitter will always be bitter. Hell will always be hot. Eternity will always be burning. It'll never change. There'll never be another washing, another swallow of sweet water. The bitter will never be made sweet. And I'm done. And the Lord God, the Bible says, the bitter pool, Moses led them there. Moses led them there. Think about this. They just had put the blood on the lintel and on the doorpost. Then God brought them through the Red Sea and God led them right straight to the bitter pool. And they were crying and they were they were hoopla and everything and Moses preacher it's all your fault 
preacher gets blamed for about everything, don't he? It's all that low-down rascal's fault. Throw that booger out the door and we'll get us a new one. You might get a new broom, but this old broom knows where the dirt's at. After a while, if he'll preach the Word of God, he's going to preach the same book I'm preaching. But the thing about it is, this old broom going to hang around just a day or two. All right? But God led them there. God led them there. But by faith, they went to the man of God. The man of God couldn't, couldn't change that pool. He couldn't change that water. He couldn't do one ounce. He couldn't do, he couldn't help them that pool of water one bit. He went to God. And you know what they were doing? Well, that crazy old man, he's out there praying to a God he can't see. He's praying to a God that we've never heard of. He's praying to somebody that we don't know nothing about. We just done what he said to and he brought us out here through dry land. Now we're going to thirst to death. Now what are we going to do? He's over there calling on a God that we know nothing about. And we're in the valley of dry bones. And what? Faith in God will produce a plan. How will it produce a plan that will work? Follow God's man. If he's following God's word. If he's not, get you one that will. And I'm telling you the truth based on the Word of God. Get you somebody that's not preaching out of, of the almanac or out of a phone book. Amen, Jake. Amen. You got to know what he's preaching out of Amen. and who he's preaching about. You got to know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You got to know the King of Kings. You got to know the God of glory. How do you know Him? Uh, you got to be washed in the blood of the Lamb of God. Brother, that's how you know Him. Brother, the thing, uh, begin to thank God for all of the things He's done for you. Begin to praise God for all His glory. And when He threw that tree, into that water, the bitter became sweet. And in your life, just begin to thank Him. Thank Him for, just thank Him and thank Him and start thanking Him and start thanking Him. And after a while, you're not going to be able to quit thanking Him. Then your bitter will become sweet. And look what He said. In verse 26, And He said, If thou wilt, diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will hear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of these diseases on thee which have brought which I have brought upon Egypt now look at the last part. For I am the Lord that what? Healeth thee. God don't want you sick. God, God don't want you suffering. They throw that tree. A type of Calvary. A type of Calvary. They put it in the pool and that represents the word of the living God. And God said, I must go to Calvary. I must go. Why? As it is written. As it is written in the word. 
And he told his, all of them after he come back, he said, I'm going away. You can't go now. But if I go, he said, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Stephanie, would you come to the instrument, please? Jane, would you get us a song, just like you are? Just as I am this morning, would you sing a couple of verses? Just like you are this morning. Is it, are you facing some bitter times? Are you facing some rough times? I'm not asking you if you're saved or lost. I'm asking you, are you facing some bitter times? Would you like for some sweet times to come into your life? Would you like for some better times? Would you like for the bitter to become sweet? Would you like for your valleys to kind of reach an end? Would you like for them to? Would you just like for the bitter to become sweet? Let's stand. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, would you reach down this morning and touch that precious heart Lord, I want them to have the very best. God, I'm crying unto God as Moses did for my people. God, for your church. For the church, God, you have placed me as an under-shepherd. God, as I looked at this yesterday, and Lord, I, I asked you, Lord God, to give me that feeling. Lord, I want this as an under-shepherd under God. As you have placed me here, Lord, all God Almighty, in the heavens, oh, the God to come, as God is and always will be, would you walk the aisles of this church today like you've never walked? God, like you've never been before. Maybe like you'll never be again, Lord, I don't know. But God, would you go by seat by seat, by heart by heart, by hand by hand. And God, help the bitter to become sweet. God, please. Lord, God, cast the tree into the waters and make that bitter to become sweet. God, make them, oh, make Mount Carmel, God, so sweet. The honey will drip from the lips of this church. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.